So this is, the, as I said, the beginning of a six-week course on how to build an online store using WordPress, Thesis, and Shop. And in particular, it's the Shop plugin that's the thing that we'll be dealing with the most here. And, okay, in any case, we're, we're doing this six-week seminar. And the inspiration from this actually came from something that we did in October. In October, we had uh, some live website makeover sessions where we invited our members to submit their sites for makeovers. And then uh, our resident artist and I put our heads together on their sites and we worked on some designs for those sites. And one of the sites that we worked on was the site Lanny Basham's. And he has a whole bunch of different sites, but one in particular that he wanted to work on was his online store, which is a relatively slow and performs fairly poorly. And it's in Drupal, which is a system that's difficult for him to maintain. And Lenny actually will be joining us each of these sessions, both to ask questions and to make comments as we go along, because the store that we're designing is actually his real live store. Now, as we proceed through this, there's going to be a course syllabus. And in fact, you can download tonight's lecture notes. If you, if you come to this page here, and, and I should probably direct everybody how to get to this. This is, this is the course page. And if you're logged in, all you have to do is go to video lessons, down to building an e-commerce website, and then build an online store using shop. Uh, that's how you get in there if you're logged in. If you're not logged in, then you can come from Start Learning here. And the very first menu item on there is this new free class, uh, Build an Online Store Using Shop. So either way, it's fairly close and immediate access to the seminar page. And this is where, of course, you'll sign up. Most of you probably already have signed up this way. But each week, the sign up links will be here. And there will also be links to the resource pages or resources for this week's lesson. In particular, we have this week's lecture notes and this week's slides. So if you feel like you want to read as we go along, you certainly feel free to download these lecture notes. When the videos are posted, there will be a written outline of the entire session that will go along with that. And that will be on a page that can be accessed from here. Lesson will, Each lesson will have a link there off to the lesson page where both the videos and the outline will be available. Okay, and so obviously this is in a... And all these videos, I'm sorry, all these videos will be available for everyone to watch for free up until February 1st. Once February 1st comes, the videos will be moved into the premium section of the site. But they will all be available to watch free up until February 1st, which is a couple of weeks after our session is completed. Also, I will be taking questions, not only questions in the context of the webinar, but questions throughout the week in between webinars. And my preferred method of taking these questions is actually going to be on the on our Facebook page, actually. If you go over to facebook.com slash BYOB website and post questions on our wall, that's actually my preferred method of answering questions here for the next six weeks. It's an experiment to see how well the wall can be used as an interactive medium for instruction like this. In addition to writing them out, I also have a new feature here on Fan Central, which you can see if you select that, go to Fan Central. On Fan Central, I have a section called Ask Me a Question. And under Ask Me a Question, there is this button, Record a Screencast. This will actually allow you to record a question, and you can show your site and record your voice and everything else. And then if you watch this little video, that will show you how to use this tool. But it's uh, if typing out your question doesn't seem like the right way to do it, or if you have a hard time explaining what it is you're concerned about, by all means use this. I'm anxious for somebody to use this tool, so, so please feel free to do so. Second, I'm switching PowerPoint presentations here. Okay, 
So the store that we're building is located at www.mentalmanagementstore.com. And it's a site that's currently set up with WordPress 3.3 beta 3 and Thesis 1.82. By the time we're done tonight, we'll also have Shop 1.9 or 1. Point, yeah, 1. 9, uh, installed. We're doing this in a webinar format with 90 minutes of instruction, 30 minutes of Q&A afterwards. And I will, we're going to break after about an hour. It gives me a chance to turn off the video and start recording again. It gives everybody a chance to stretch their legs and whatever. So we'll be taking a break after about an hour. And right now, I guess what I would like to do is introduce Lanny. So Lanny, I'm going to try and find you here again in my long list. Oh, it's alphabetical. How nice is that? Good evening, Lanny. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Ray? I'm, I'm doing really well. Can you turn your microphone up? Yep. Sure. How about that? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, Lanny, I haven't said anything about you. Why don't you, why don't you tell everybody a, a little bit about you and what you do for a living and what your business looks like and then what you're hoping we can accomplish? Well, I won a silver medal in the Olympics in 1972 in rifle shooting. I should have won the gold medal. I choked. And I wanted to take a course in how to manage the mine under pressure so when I went back to the Olympics next time, I wouldn't have the same result. So I did a lot of research on uh, what Olympic athletes, or especially gold medalists, were doing about the medal game and got some good information. Used the system, or created the system, used it to win the gold medal in the Olympics and World Championships for, for, for several years. And then right after that, realized that maybe other people would be interested in what I found out. And so I started Mental Management Systems in 1977, primarily to help Olympic athletes initially. And then it broadened out to a lot of other areas to where today about all about 50% of our business is, is uh, pro golf or uh, the, golf, the golf industry. But we have a lot of other clients too. And so in our, in our company, we uh, not only provide seminar support, but we also have books and CDs and DVDs and downloads and ebooks and um, of, of some of the products and that, that we offer. And what we really need is, um, is a store that can deliver all that in a way that we can manage it um, you know, ourselves and, and, and make it very efficient and, and, and good for us. Okay, and so <clears throat> I hope that's what we'll accomplish in the next six weeks. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, I think that's going to be plenty of time for us to get all that done. But, um, uh, but uh, if you have questions while I'm chatting away here, just feel free to chime in and ask them. Okay. 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 So what we're building here is an online store that sells books, CDs, DVDs, audio downloads, and eBooks. And the store has some special requirements. One of them is that we need to be able to do international shipping. We need to be able to automatically calculate a shipping cost before the sale is processed. We need to be able to bundle together physical and electronic products in a single purchase, even in a single product. And we need to be able to automatically calculate uh, sales tax for Texas residents while not having to calculate that for uh, or collect it for other folks. And the reason I refer to these as special requirements is because these are things that many of the e-commerce solutions for WordPress out there have a difficult time addressing. And so it's one of the reasons why we ended up selecting shop. And so the tools we're going to be using for this naturally is WordPress. You know, the majority of my site is about the thesis theme and how to use the thesis theme. So we will be talking about thesis, although much of what we're going to do can be done in other WordPress themes as well. We'll be using the shop plugin. We'll be using authorize.net as our payment provider, although I will also show you how to set up a standard PayPal uh, version as well. Again, most of the tutorials out there have demonstrate how to sh set up PayPal. And this time we're going to be setting up Authorize.net, and it will include um, uh, the SSL certificate and that sort of thing. 
and we'll also be setting up Amazon S3 as the secure storage for the downloadable content. So um, there's a, a number of, of interesting elements to this. And the reason we are using these tools is first because Shop meets all of our business requirements. It does allow us to do all the things in this business that we need to do, unlike other, other plugins that are available to us. We're also using Shop because Shop and Thesis have been tested together and they work well without problems. So we don't have to monkey around with Shop code or Thesis code or um, anything in order to make it work. Uh, Shop and Thesis work together just fine right out of the box. Also, Shop and Thesis are both very highly customizable and they have similar types of customization. So if you're uh, familiar with customizing Thesis, you'll be familiar with using hooks and filters for customizing Thesis. Well, it turns out Shop does exactly the same thing. Shop has hooks and filters that allow you to customize virtually any part of the process. And so there's some very common concepts uh, in customizing them. And then finally, Shop has a business model that's likely to survive the long haul, at least in my estimation. The problem, in my mind, the problem with, with relying heavily on plugins that are free is that it's not a model for, I think, long-term business success. Most of the free plugins, you know, are essentially are labors of love by people who aren't being paid in order to do it. And, and because the business is too important to us to rely on that, not knowing how well that will survive in the future, Shop has a model where it sells its software and or licenses its software. And, and that is likely to produce the necessary revenue for it to stay in business. So... Um, those are the reasons why we're using those tools. And before I say ask what you can do for me, I want to say who this class is for. You know, this class is for anybody who wants to learn the nuts and bolts of setting up an online store using WordPress. Because that's what we're going to be addressing is the nuts and bolts of setting it up. It's a suitable class for both from beginning to advanced students. However, and I know we have some advanced people in the audience here, However, advanced students are going to have to suffer through some basic explanations of things that they already understand, and you'll be doing that tonight. And if you are a beginner, you may need to hang in there a little bit and, and sort of power through some things because we may be talking about concepts that you're not familiar with. And I want to make sure that the question and answer period that we have afterwards and the, uh, all of the communication methods that are available to me to communicate with you are, well, that you use them, that you avail yourselves of them so that you learn the material that we're trying to cover here. Um, so I said that by my preferred method of communication, my preferred method of answering questions here is going to be via Facebook. But really, if you're a beginner and you're having a hard time understanding what we're talking about, but this is something that's important to you, then use any tool at your disposal to contact me. You can email me, you can call me on the phone, you can Skype me, you can text me, you can do any of those things. And all my contact information is on the site, so it's I'm easily accessible and available. Okay, so, oh, actually, so why am I teaching this? Well, I'm teaching this because I actually really enjoy teaching WordPress. I enjoy teaching small business owners how to build their own websites, how to leverage the software that's available to them inexpensively or free, how to use their time and their skills to bring their products to the Internet. And... It was, as a small business owner, uh, well, as an architect, back in the late 2000s, <laughs> you know, when the bottom dropped out of the market, if it hadn't have been for WordPress, I, you know, we would have gone under. And, and I learned a lot about what it takes for a small business owner to run a, a website online, and I want to share that with other small business owners. You know, we're also... I'm totally fascinated by this new movement of democratization of instruction, you know, because we're really at the beginning of that. The, the existence of inexpensive high-speed broadband, the uh, existence of inexpensive video creation tools, and WordPress 
has made it all possible for the education paradigm that we are familiar with to be changed. You know, the current, edu current education paradigm is centered on institutions, and those institutions, institutions limit access for participants. Not anybody can learn, and they also limit access to teachers. Not anybody can teach. Well, uh, the new paradigm allows for the development of knowledge communities where anybody with the knowledge can teach and anybody with the desire and the aptitude can learn. And that's what this process is an experiment in. It's an experiment in adult education in, uh, uh, in the new education paradigm. And I'm having just a, a lot of fun doing that. So what can you do for me? Well, the first thing that you can do for me is help this be interactive. This is going to be way more interesting for everybody if this is interactive, which means that you ask questions during the question and answer session. Well, now that I've been doing this for a couple of years, I know that people are apprehensive to ask questions. They don't want to ask something because they don't want to sound dumb, or they don't want to ask something because you know somebody else out there is going to have a better question. The problem is, is that stops lots of really good questions from being asked. So the chances are, if you have a question, then other people in this seminar also have that question. And other people watching the seminar later are going to have that question. And so it makes the whole process much better if people who are participating ask questions. And also, not just asking questions, but asking questions about your specific situation. Really, one of the fun things about this class is that we're actually building a real store, a real store that is going to really sell the products when we're finished with it. We're not building a sample store with sample products where the outcome doesn't really matter because it's just a, a sample. And you sharing your experiences and your questions from your experiences will go a long way to making this interesting. And so that's what you can do for me. You can make this more interesting by making it interactive, by asking questions um, uh, either in the Q&A or on Facebook in between sessions so that other people have a chance to learn from your questions. And then finally, if you found this seminar to be valuable, then if you wouldn't mind posting a link to the web, to the page on Facebook or tweeting about it, you know, the fact that somebody didn't make tonight's webinar doesn't mean they can't catch up because the videos will be available and there's lots of opportunity for other people yet to gain benefit from this. And so if you gained a benefit from it, then pass it on for us, please.